Hello, this video is about ClearWin Plus and about drawing graphs. It demonstrates a new feature in ClearWin Plus that makes it easier to configure a graph. We start with a simple program that illustrates the basic idea. This program uses percent PL in order to draw a graph of Y values. The Y values are presented here, or created via a GU loop, and in this case it's just a simple quadratic curve. The X values are presented as a starting value and an increment DX. In front of the percent PL, we have a PV, which allows the window to be size, resized. In addition, we have a caption for the window, the background color for the window, a title for the graph, and then this line, which is new to ClearWin Plus, and uh, enables us to do the configuring. So let's see how that works in practice. We'll run the program. And then we find that there is a button which is created, which when we click on it, opens a dialog box from which we can select different options to configure the graph. Let's show you a little bit more detail. You can see there, there's a, a list box and uh, a status bar, various buttons, which we're going to use to change the properties of the graph. Let's suppose we uh, just select the line width and use this spin button here, click on it and increase the line width from one to two. We could change the, the color of that line. And maybe uh, select a symbol to put on that line and we'll look at a little bit more detail in a moment on how that works out. Eventually we'll just close the window and save the information. So how does that work? Well the new line which I mentioned earlier involves a character variable params which is provided here and set to blank and the purpose of that character buffer is to provide a buffer for saving the the data from this configuration process and uh, once we have that those results we can paste them back into the code and uh, get the benefits of the new configuration. Let's go on to another example to look in more detail. This time we have two curves number of graphs is two. We have a set of y values which is a quadratic, a set of z values which is a cubic and also in this case an array of x values. x is presented as an array. So the data comes in here as the number of points 
the x array values, y and z values. Uh, again, we have a background color, a caption for the graph, for the window, sorry, uh, the number of graphs, the title for the graph, and this new character buffer for the results. When I run that program, click on the button to open the dialog, and then we can start to look at some of the details. Let's change the line width again and increase that to two. And that changes the line width for, all, for both the graphs. We uh, can select which graph, graph we're dealing with from here and then change, let's say, the line color. Perhaps that one should be red. And then go to graph two, change the line color, make that one, let's say, blue. We could change the symbol. Initially, there's no symbol represented by zero. Uh, increase that and choose a symbol from those that are available. There we have a square. And let's go on to graph number two and choose a symbol for that. This time I've chosen the triangle. Um, maybe we should have that a little bit larger. There we go. So now we've got the, the symbols on the graph. Let, let's put a grid on the graph as well. And <clears throat> we could, for example, uh, change the maximum value here. Uh, the maximum values are lower down. And this time we will have to change the value in this edit box and then click on draw and that implements a change. We could do the same for the y values and the z values and click on draw again. There's also here at the default interval is 0.15. So let's uh, have a look at that. That's the tick intervals. We're currently 1.15. Change, let's change that to uh, 0.1 and draw. Right, we have now 0.1 across here. And let's do the same for the Y values. Let's now change the, the Y values. So when we uh, come to the end of our configuration, we can close, we can save before or save as we close, save the plot changes, yes. We have an option to copy the changes either to the clipboard or to put them directly back in the character buffer in the program. That in this case, that doesn't help us because the program is about to close. So we'll save the data to the clipboard. Now, let me just paste that in from the clipboard. And uh, see what the effect is of that. Well, now we run the program and it incorporates the changes that we've made, uh, and including the, the new size for the, the graph, which I've used during the configuration. Now, when we've finished our process of configuring, uh, we could then 
finally add uh, another option, which is the option locked to these properties. And when we do that, the result is that we use that data, but the button no longer appears uh, and the, the graph is in a locked state. Let's go on to a third example and uh, we'll look at these properties, individual properties in more detail. This time uh, we have two uh, damped waves, sine waves, and we're going to see if we can configure that to make it look a little bit better. And uh, the title and various things are, are not very well presented at the moment, but let's just go through the process and see uh, how we can improve that. We'll start by changing the line width as before. Uh, so we have a, a reasonable curve. And uh, then let's look at these um, individual settings. The uh, line style, it can be either no line or a straight line between the points or curves. Now the curves is what we want, so we won't change that. Uh, the pen style, well, maybe I should start by changing the colors again, so make it easier to see it. I'll put those colors in uh, as before. So we've got the two curves more clearly presented. Now then let's look at this uh, pen style. The pen style can be uh, zero to four and the zero is what we have which is a solid. Uh, or then you can go on to different styles of a dotted line and different types of dotted lines. The symbol we've already seen and the symbol size, the line width we know about. The smoothing is in the range from naught to four and it's four by default and that gives you the best uh, smoothing appearance on these curves. Okay, now we've got the title position and here uh, it's by default it's set as zero and this title position is an offset on whatever clear wind plots provides for you. So here, if I uh, go left you and, and hold down on that spin button, you'll see the title moving to the left. Uh, and if I use this button below, then it, it goes down. I can reset both of those to the original starting positions. This, then you've got, we can move the, uh, X caption in the same sort of ways. This time it really needs to go up a little bit higher, I think. So we'll move that up. The Y caption needs to be a little bit to the left. So we'll move that across in that way. The tick value position, that could do with going down a little bit. That moves the tick values down. And these ones, maybe they're about right. Okay, now we've got the title height. This, um, again, this is a default of zero. This increases the height of the main title. Uh, and then here for the uh, caption, both captions, you can increase the height there of those two captions, X and Y captions. Tick values. Well, they maybe they're about right, or they can be increased. Those values, the num num numerical values, uh, there for the at the tick points. Minimum and maximum we've seen before. Tick intervals we've seen that before. Significant figures that will adjust the number of figures in the significant figures in these values. Uh, tick values and they're about right at the moment. Uh, next one we have is the line width for the axis. Well, we could make that thicker. We can also make those lines etched 
and that gives us an extra thickness to them as well. Then, well, we've not got a frame on at the moment. We can change the thickness of the frame. Let's put a frame on. And let's put the grid lines on again. Uh, we can change the frame, width of the frame there, make that thicker. I'm not sure I want that, but uh, okay, we'll take it off again. And then this is the, the length of the tick marks. We can increase that. That's default is five pixels can be made a bit bigger. And now finally, you've got the margin. And uh, these are uh, left, right, top and bottom margins, which can be adjusted uh, by these two entries here. We have seen the, the line color. Let's look at the back color. Maybe we should have a, a pale yellow for the background color. Uh, the font color we can change. I'll make that into a dark blue. Not obvious perhaps in this demonstration, but that was now dark blue. And uh, <clears throat> that really covers everything. We, uh, if you really want external ticks, you can have external ticks there. Uh, and we now have uh, something which is uh, more presentable. So eventually then we uh, come to save, maybe first. Copy to clipboard, yes, we want to do that. And then close. Thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoy these, this new feature.